I want to talk to you this morning about God chasers in hot pursuit. You know, many, many programs on television remind us of the prophetic scripture that we're living in the end times. And when we look at the end time scriptures and the condition of our society, there are several things that we're noticing in our world right now that would lead us to believe scripturally and socially and around the world, including what's happening in Israel and Hamas and Palestine and the riots and the uh, different protests we're seeing in our streets right here in America, the peaceful protests where they burn down cities, that it leads you to believe that we are truly living in the end times and what the Bible calls the last days. And one of the marks of the last days is lawlessness. Yet at the same time, if you read the scripture, in the book of Acts, where the Holy Spirit was poured out, 3,000 people were born again. The apostle Peter, speaking by the Holy Spirit, says, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Raise your hand if you have flesh. And I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your old men are going to dream dreams, and your young men are going to have visions, and your handmaidens, I'm going to pour out my spirit, and God's going to do mighty things in the last days. There's two sides of the last days. On the one side, there's lawlessness. On the other side of that coin is those who love God and are pursuing God in hot pursuit. They are the God chasers. There's basically, basically, generally speaking, three types of people that may be here today or viewing this or that you may encounter this week. That's the God chasers. The people that are passionate about pleasing God. Anybody like that in here this morning? Say, I'm a God pleaser. When they called the apostles on the religious carpet for preaching the gospel and literally healing the sick, the apostles looked at the religious leaders and said, you know, you know just tell me what's better, to please men or to please God? Are there any God pleasers in here? I said, is there... Are there any God pleasers in here this morning? Any God chasers? This world is in desperate need for those of us who call ourselves Christians to be in hot pursuit of God and His will, not just for our lives, because the Christian faith and the Christian heritage is not to just stop with us. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach this good news. Well, that's One group of people that you may encounter here today or during this week. And then you have the people pleasers. The people pleasers. Those are the people that do everything they can to appease everybody they encounter. We work so hard to please people who we don't even know. We work so hard to convince other people that we're good people. That we have the right intentions. And it's so easy, even as believers, to begin to unknowingly or even unwillingly to begin to compromise what the Word of God says so that other people will be pleased or appeased and we will be accepted in their eyes. Are there any God-pleasers in here today? And then you have, now this gets a little more personal, and this may fit you, and if it does, if the shoe fits, get a new foot. Come on, somebody. That's the flesh teasers. The flesh teasers are those who endeavor to satisfy the, the insatiable, insatiable desire of the flesh what feels good the debate even among Christians today or whether or not I can do this activity participate in this event and still go to heaven for some it's not a debate their doctrinal position says once I'm saved I can do whatever I want to you know what I've been saved over 50 years and I do what I want to But let me tell you, my want to today is a little different than my want to 45 years ago, 48 years ago. God's changed my want to. Say this with me. My father is a good God, and if I will serve him, 
and fellowship with him, spend time with him, he will change my want to. Look at the person beside you and say, do you want to? See, we all know the scripture, my God will supply all of my needs. Thank God he doesn't supply all of our wants. Some of you got what you wanted, and then you got a divorce. <laughs> That's too personal. That's a soft spot right there, buddy. Got to be careful. We need to fix that right there. See, a lot of us spend a lot of time trying to appease our flesh. Let me tell you, your flesh is not there to be appeased or to be pleased. Your flesh is to be brought under subjection to the holy word of God. And if you're a God chaser, you'll cast down imaginations and bring into captivity not just your thoughts. You'll bring your body under subjection lest after you preach to others, you yourself become a castaway. Don't look at the person beside you. I'm talking to you today because you're a God pleaser. Say it with me out loud. I... I'm in hot pursuit of the Father and His will because I'm a God pleaser. Now, you know, we know in this particular arena, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, because we're all here endeavoring to please God, occasionally we'll please one another. And there's going to be some occasions that maybe we don't. So this morning I want you to be encouraged because I suspect there are people here today that need God to answer a prayer. I suspect there are people here today who have a prayer request that you've been believing God maybe for a day, a week, a month, or maybe a decade. I'm going to tell you something. Our God is faithful. And the vision's for an appointed time. So don't give up. Continue to live for God. Continue to use this time to cultivate a relationship with Him by His Spirit and in His Word. And let Him change the things in your life that He needs to change. Hebrews says it like this, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, the just shall live by faith. It doesn't say we will just live by faith. It says the just, who justified us, who made us just as if we had never sinned, the blood of Jesus. The just, everybody say the just, shall live by faith. Romans 1, 17, you know that scripture, don't you, in Romans chapter 1? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to those who believe. Look at verse 17. For herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Because it is written the just. Raise your hand if that's you. The just shall live by faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And if I'm hoping for, that means I may not currently have it in my grasp. But it doesn't mean it's not within my reach. Come on, I'm going to preach to somebody up in this house. Yeah, I know it's Sunday and it may hurt somebody, but I'm going to get to it here in a minute. Galatians chapter 3, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. In other words, you're not going to be good enough to get it from God unless you get it because of the blood that you've come under, the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. And it says, the just shall live by faith. Now in scripture and theology, there's this principle that when God emphasizes something or repeats himself it's because he believes it's important for us to hear it because faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God and let every word be established by two or three witnesses I've just given you three reasons why you as the just should live by faith now faith is the substance of things hoped for we may not have it in our grasp but it's still within our reach by faith Let's get personal. Let's not talk about somebody else. Let's talk about you. Just me and you having a conversation. Are you a God pleaser? Oh, that was enthusiastic. 
Are you a God pleaser? Are you in casual pursuit or in hot pursuit? Are you looking to appease other people to convince them you got something that maybe you really don't have, but if you get loud enough, they might think that you do. Come on, I'm trying to hurt. I may help somebody in here this morning. Are you a flesh teaser? I think I can still do this and still have an intimate relationship with God. I can still do this. Go there. Participate in this. And I believe because of grace, I can tease and please my flesh and still somehow please my father see here's the reality flee flee run from youthful lust let me tell you how you run because there believe it or not believe it or not there was once a time in my life I was young that's a shocker right there buddy I'll tell you how young I am I'm young enough for, to run for president. <laughs> if I'm fleeing from youthful lust, if I'm focused on what's chasing me, that's exhausting. But if I pursue righteousness, if I pursue God, if I chase after the will of God, I'm automatically fleeing from youthful lust and the things that might tease and please my flesh but might be an anchor holding me down as a weight and sin that prevents me from successfully running after God. Right. See, we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us. Some of y'all been here long enough, and I'm not going to go into the depth of how wonderful I was as a child athlete. I'm a legend in my own mind. But the JCs put on an event up back at Arkansas State University at Jonesboro. I was in the sixth grade. I was 12 years old, I think. And I didn't pay attention when the principal, Miss Dunlap, came and told us that on Saturday, if you want to be a part of this event, go down to the stadium there, the Indian Stadium, back when it was called the Indian Stadium, now the Redwood Stadium, and uh, sign up. Well, that's not all she said. That's just all I heard. Well, back when you lived in the country, some of y'all remember when you'd only come into town on Saturday to shop. So I told Mama, I said, Mama, I want to go, because I used to run from the garden all the way up to the house uh, in the afternoons or evenings, and I would run beside the car like Forrest Gump. I said, Mama, how fast am I running? She said, run, Perry, run. You're doing 10. And I'd run a little, you're doing 11. And she would, she would judge how fast I was running on the speedometer of the car. I love running. And I used to watch track on television with my mother. And I said, Mama, one of these days, you're going to see me on TV running. She sat on the front row of this very church and saw me run with the vision God gave me. And so, just to put a little emphasis on the right syllables, uh, I got Mama to come in to shop on Saturday, and I said, can you drop me off at the college, because I need to sign up. Well, you know, those of you that grew up in the country, you didn't, you didn't go to town unless you put your Sunday clothes on. You didn't go to town in your overalls, and I owned overalls. So I put on my Sunday shoes, my Sunday pants, my Sunday shirt, my Sunday belt, my little Sunday bow tie. Because I was going to go down there and sign up. Well, when I got there, Mama dropped me off and off she went to Safeway to shop. And I get there to sign up and everybody's in gym shorts and tennis shoes. And they're out on the football field and they're exercising. So I walk up to the sign up counter and all these gentlemen, there are three or four of them there. And I said, I'm here to sign up for the, the big track meet. They looked at me and said, dress like that, son? I said, yeah, I just need to sign up. When's the meet? They said, today. It pays to pay attention. If you don't want to pay attention, get a mule. So I rode up my Sunday britches and took off my Sunday shoes and I ran in that meet. And I won the division 
for 13 and under. I got a picture of me in the Jonesboro Sun newspaper. It's on parchment, but I have the picture. What did I have to do? I had to lay aside every weight that did so easily beset me. There are some things in your life that you think, there's nothing wrong with Sunday shoes. There's nothing wrong with Sunday britches. There's nothing wrong with a Sunday bow tie. Well, I, yeah, there is too. <laughs> but there are some things in our lives that we choose to participate in to appease or to please that hinder us from running this race to glorify God. I made a decision 51 years ago. I choose to please God. So I want to challenge you this morning. I want you to do your own inventory, just you and the Spirit of God. Jesus paid the same price for me as he did for you, same price for you that he did for me, the same price for us that he did for the whole world. But still people refuse to live by faith. What's it mean to live by faith? It means that I may not have within my grasp what God has for me, but it's still within my reach. And therefore, if I want to reach what God has for me, I need to throw off every weight and every sin that endeavors to hinder me. That's why the Bible says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. To me, religion is bondage, but relationship with God through Jesus Christ is freedom. Freedom to do what? Freedom to pursue and fulfill the will of God for your life. What is pursuit? Well, pursuit is the inward quality of staying focused. Never looking back. And always pressing on. Jesus said it like this in Luke 9. He said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Anybody ever plow before? You grab a hold of that plow. It can be attached to a tractor or it can be attached to a mule or a team of mules. If you're looking back, you'll get off course. When you put your hand to the plow, you have to stay focused. And you're focused at the end of the row because that's where you want to go. Oh, there's a lot going on out here. Daddy used to make us work in the garden. Make us work in the garden. He made us pull weeds. He made us plant seed. It was not an option. Daddy never came into the bedroom and said, Boy, are you going to get up and plant today? Son, when you get off the bus today after school, are you going to stay in here and watch TV or are you going to get out in that garden and work? He never did that. You know why? Because he is daddy. And if you're going to be successful in your life, you're going to have to make a determination. It don't matter who else is playing. It don't matter whatever sport there is going on. No matter what your friends may be doing when they get off the bus or when they walk home from school. At our house, this is what you do. And we pulled weeds and worked in the garden until it was dark. And it didn't get dark to 8.30, 9 o'clock. So if you're going to get to the end of the row and you're going to pursue the will of God and you're going to be a God chaser in hot pursuit of the will of God for your life, there's going to be times when you think, well, how come this is not working? But it's when you have to press on toward the prize. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Arkansas Christian Academy. Are you looking for a private, fully accredited Christian school for your children? Christian education has never, ever been more affordable than it is right now. Why don't you contact us right here at Arkansas Christian Academy and schedule a tour. There's all kinds of activities for your student as well as educational opportunities and you don't want to miss out. So we look forward to seeing you right here at Arkansas Christian Academy. God bless. See, to retreat or to return, they're not options. They're not options. They're not viable alternatives. It's possible, I just refuse to consider it. 
Jesus in the garden said, Father, if it's possible to allow this suffering, this cup to pass, but not my will, but thy will. There's always going to be a double-mindedness as long as you're thinking of your will versus God's will. God has a plan for your life. There's nothing, no money, no position, no title, no, quote, success, no accolade that will fulfill your life. But what you were designed to do and who you are designed by God to be and to become. No retreat. They are not options. I served on a wonderful church for a number of years. Seven years in West Little Rock. I was honored. I thought I'd be there the rest of my life. But God clearly spoke to my heart. Straight from his word. And told me I was to leave staff ministry. And staff security. And travel. And I had a calendar. Every page, it opened, it'd be January, February. And on every page of my calendar for 1988, no remorse, no regrets, and no retreat. Did I have an opportunity? I had two scheduled meetings for the early part of 1988. And when they found out that I was no longer on staff at that church, they assumed there must be something wrong. And so they canceled the meetings. And I asked the Lord about it. And here's what I heard him tell me in my heart. If someone calls, are you available? <laughs> I said, yeah, no matter what Sunday they need me, I'm available. I have 52 openings. I didn't have 50 openings. I had 52 because the two I had were canceled. So I spent the first several weeks, 10 or 12 weeks, of 1988 with no retreat, no remorse, and no regrets, and no scheduled meetings. I'd call preachers that knew me whose children and teenagers came to my teen camps who knew how to be fired up for Jesus, and they gave me the old preacher response. Well, Perry, we'll pray about having you in. I'm like, I don't need prayer. I need a meeting. God's given me a word. I just need an opportunity. Went over 10 weeks. Nobody's invited me to speak. So I wrote my first book, Miracle Number One. And I just kept praying and believing God. And here's what God spoke to me in my heart. When you worked in the grocery business, did you get paid every week? I said, oh, yes, sir. He said, what did you have to do? I said, get up and go to work. He said, when you worked at the ministry in West Little Rock, did you get paid? I said, yes, sir, twice a month. He said, what'd you have to do? I said, I had to get up and go in. He said, was I faithful when you were in the grocery business? I said, yes, sir. He said, was I faithful when you were in the ministry? I said, yes, sir. He said, don't you think I'll be faithful now? Just get up and go to work. So I went to my, went to my little office adjacent to the laundry room, my international headquarters. <laughs> and I went to work. And I worked 12 and 14, 15, 16 hours a day. Primarily because I typed so slow. And then the phone rang. Perry, I got your newsletter. When can you come? I said, how about Sunday? <laughs> I hung up the phone. The phone rang. Perry, when can you come? I said, I can come in two weeks. Put me down. Then the phone rang. And in a matter of one day, I scheduled three months of meetings nonstop. And then they stopped. And in one day, I scheduled three more months of meetings. There are going to be times it doesn't look like it's working. Sometimes it's going to look like it's not possible. Sometimes it looks that it's not within reach. But I'm here to tell you the just shall live by faith. And faith means I may not have it in my grasp. It may not be on my calendar. But by faith, it's within my reach because I'm a God chaser. And I'm in hot pursuit in the steps of Jesus. And he's a faithful God. Some of you may have heard the song or maybe heard the phrase, burn the ships. That's based when Cortez 
made his Spanish expedition, expedition and landed in Mexico. And after the long sea journey, his, his team of sailors and soldiers were exhausted. So to motivate them and to get them to totally commit to the mission that he was on, he told them, he said, scuttle and burn the ships. Now they're totally committed to success. People said, don't burn your bridges. The best thing you can do is burn the bridge to your past. Jesus came not so we can spend a little lazy time of recreation at church or in churchianity for Christ, but so that we can become soldiers of the cross. Burn the ships. Burn them. No way back. The whole story of the Israelites passing through the Red Sea it closed behind them, and they were not water walkers. They could not go back, except over and over in their mind. Did we not have pots full of food as we sat around the fires of Egypt? Bunch of liars in their own heads, sitting around talking about how it was great in the good old days. I'm not here to have yesterday's revival. I'm not here to have the Zusa Street revival. I'm here to be a part of the end time revival and the outpouring and the harvest of the world because of the blood of Jesus that's sweeping our nation. I don't want to watch some other move of God somewhere else. I'm pursuing God and I'm in hot pursuit this morning. Are there any God chasers in this house? <laughs> Every once in a while I teach, occasionally I get excited. <laughs> Surround yourself with positive, uplifting people who expand your boundaries of possibilities and believe in your true potential. You should find them here. Encircle yourself with supportive individuals who energize you more than they drain you. Nurture the connections that love and cherish your presence. People who remind you of the person you are meant to be and help you fall a little more in love with Jesus. That should be the house of God. When somebody's hurting, somebody trips and falls, we should be the first to say, come on, together we win. Get up. Though a righteous man falls seven times, he'll rise again. Thank you.